Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, quite simply, as far as I am concerned. Slightly biased, yeah. The greatest all-round fishing show you may ever have seen. What are we going to be fishing for this time? It's going to be a bottom-feeding racing shark that goes so fast it might melt the line in your rod rings. I refer, of course, to the British Smoothhound. Now, it's a summer species. I wish I could say it was summer outside, but it's not halfway bad. It's fishable. It's fishable. We've got to go with what we've got. Well, let's get down there. Where am I going to take you? Hmm. Bit of a surprise. Beautiful English countryside, beautiful English shoreline, and a crackerjack fish. Let's talk to some experts and let's get some rod bending action. <laughs> North Somerset countryside. It's awe-inspiring. Lush vegetation with forest and pasture land, arable farms, the wilds of Exmoor and yes of course castles where they hide their princesses. Well, I for one will not be scaling any ramparts in search of a female. I was in Somerset to chase hounds. No, not the hounds of the Baskervilles up on some desolate moor but the tackle-tearing speedsters of the shore, the hard-scrapping smooth hound. The starting point for my search was the Somerset port of Minehead, its tiny harbour wall sheltering the boats from any storms that might rage up the Bristol Channel. Minehead is famous as a year-round boat fishing port and has a consistency of catches that few other places can equal. A picturesque and indeed a very historically important port where seafaring used to be a way of life. Now of course the town is geared to the holiday maker. Across from the harbour you can even see the Welsh coastline and a huge power station and that's a great spot in its own right for fishing. But my first port of call was the West Coast Tackle Shop run by Craig Butler. For it's Craig and his keenish shore angers that were hoping to help me out with some footage of the elusive smooth hound. Well, I'm here in, uh, in the West Coast Tackle Shop. I'm with Craig Butler. Craig's going to give us um, not only an insight in some of the different tackle rigs and stuff like that they use down on North Somerset coast, he's also going to catch a load of fish for us, we hope. Anyway, Craig. Craig, good to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, there, Craig. Yeah. What's the sort of mark we're going to be fishing uh, uh, tonight? Uh, we're going to fish a low water mark um, for rays, uh, spotty rays and small eye rays. Basically, we're fishing off, off stones and boulders, uh, but casting onto sand. Sure. Uh, it's, it's pretty much predominantly clean sand, but there is the odd pit and sort of pile of rubbish out there. You're going to lose a bit, a bit of gear down this way anyway. You're going to possibly, lose a bit of gear. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. You know, unlucky if you do lose two sets. Oh, but, it's not know, bad then. No, it's fine. Now, we've got a bit of wind blowing. That's a downside Yeah, it's it. not um, really. It's a bit more than what we expected, but you know, we'll, make, we'll make, do of a, make do with it. And you've got some of your local top lads coming out as well, Yeah, I've got a, a couple of the lads are joining us tonight. Um, and hopefully they're keen to catch a few fish. So. Hope you don't. Yeah. So Craig, I've heard a lot about this pulley rig. Is that the sort of rig I'm going to be using on that beach? Yeah, the pulley rig is perfect for uh, fishing for this sort of ground um, obviously gives you the lift and everything. Yeah. Uh, if you if you want to go and have a chat with a couple of local lads, yeah, uh, they will give you a bit more insight into the rig. Uh, the, the two young lads is uh, Keelan Owen and Charlie Tubble, yeah, uh, both England youth team members. Oh, uh, really? Fishing oh. the home internationals in a, in the next week or so, and they're they're pretty keen to explain how this rig works. Youth internationals coming through the next generation, guys. Yeah, Let's good, hope they good. don't outfish us. Yeah, good keen lads they are. And they know yeah. they know about some of these modern rigs they use for match fishing. Yeah, yeah, they know. They're, they're right into it. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, That's all right. right you you they work away. They teach me a thing or two anyway. You work away here with Craig. I've got people standing outside Craig's shop here, so waiting to be served. So yeah. I go outside and talk to the two lads. Hopefully, we will learn a little bit about some of your rigs Definitely. down here. Yeah, we'll catch up later. Okay. Definitely. Oh, there, there you are, Keelan, aren't you, Keelan? Yes. Good man, Keelan. Charlie. It says that. It's really <laughs> name in there. In case, in case he forgets his name. We have hands on the back of our t-shirt sometimes, you know, totally awesome case I don't remember I invented it. Anyway, you two lads, you know all about the rigs down this area, and you're going to show us a couple of these rigs. So let's start with, is that probably a basic pulley panel rig? Works. Okay, so this is the basic pulley rig. Um, it's mainly used over rougher ground. So basically, 
when you're reeling a fish in, the fish will take the weight of the lead all the way to the top. And as, as you're reeling in, you'll have your weight out of the snags and the fish will trail along behind. So it's all clear, it's all clear from the bottom. The idea is to get the lead up first. Yeah, yeah. Just clip it up and show us exactly how that works. So which bit ties to the, you know, when you come through the rubbing, it ties onto the barrel swivel. So you've got your swivel on the top, that will tie onto your lead link or onto your shock leader. And then the bottom hook of your pen, well, your top hook will wrap around two or three times yeah. onto your, your top of your bait. And then the second one will clip down onto your impact lead or your imp or splash down lead. So. Now I can see where the hook is on that one. You can see actually it's difficult to see without the bait on it, but yeah, yeah. just there so people can see. When this impacts with the with the water, it pops off of that clip and then it floats free. You, I'm gonna ask you two things. You don't ever get tangles around the line like this so it doesn't release on those? You rarely get tangles with any any pulley rigs to be honest, because okay. it's so simple. Now this uh, particular impact lead. I've known, say, an ordinary one with straight spikes, but these have got slightly angular spikes there. You see, they're bent in. Is that a reason? You know, a, extra grip? Uh, or? Yeah, basically more grip and power. Um, the proper way to do it is to almost slant them at the same angle as the bottom of the lead. So, so initially they would come up this way and then up. Yeah, rather, yeah. Rather than lock it, but they, you have to have them to lock like that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Just so people can see there, it's got, well, they're little beads, are they there? Yeah. And those beads locate into little grooves on the edge of the lead either side and you can tension those yeah you can tension them out as well in I a do. stronger tide you can tension them more in a weaker tide or obviously if you're into snags you want it to break out now just and i'll still have problems with this just explain that yellow plastic because if guys have never seen these impact leads before just basically as we got it there explain basically, how that without, works without the clip you just have a well a normal a normal loop so the lead the hook will sit into the lead yeah. And then when it hits the water, the only thing releasing it would be the slack off of your line. Yes. But with the clip, let's clip it up again. So that's how I'd be using it. I've never used those, I mean, uh, to be honest, those leads. So just bring them up that's there so we can see it. But with the impact lead, the water will shoot up these little these little grooves. So I think you see that. Water. Oh, I see, just in there. Yeah. There's tiny little grooves in the lead there, if anybody can. You might just be able to see it on the camera, I don't know. So the water jets up under there. Yeah. And actually pushes. Pushes it out itself. I see, I've got it. So that actually pops the hook. Let's just show them out again, because that's. That was going to pull tight there. So yes, you cast, you pull tight. So ordinarily, when we used them years ago, the impact of this lead hitting the water would release that, and sometimes, yeah. yes, it didn't release it. Most of the time it will, but obviously... There are times it doesn't, so as long as that goes to a tight, now. it pushes it, if you can see that there, it just pushes that release. It's actually like a little spring release, isn't it? Yeah. It slides over the bend of the hook there, and pops it's it free. Oh, I see, and that's a standard sort of rig you'd use down that's, here. Yeah, that's the simplest rigs. Most people will make them a little bit shorter than this, sort of. On the rough, rough ground, you'd go to sort of eight inches long. Yeah. Just purely yeah. because, as it's on the seabed, you'll have this, say, two foot hook length. It's, it's searching a big area for the snags. Moving but around, yeah. A yeah. small one's not going to do that. Okay, now, Charlie, you've got something different there. That's a different rig altogether. Yeah, I've got an up and over or a long and low here. A long and low, yeah? Yeah. Um, this one's a shot bought rig and it's a pulley, but it's on a running ledger type system to that lead. So you've got maybe two feet of, of, of what here? What is this, 50 or something like uh, that? I think, well, it's probably about 60 or 70 pounds. Yeah, bead, you've got a bead either side of that, in case anybody can see there's little, tiny little beads. The principle of the beads is what? Why are those beads there? Um, to stop the swivel either going over that knot or damaging that knot. Yes. Just to keep them there, really. Yeah. And then there's a lead And the same at the top. If, yeah. if the swivel at the top if it slides up, yeah. that could wear that knot, maybe open it up, something like that. Yep. And then on the top of the rig here, there's a clip. Yeah, that's just we can see that. Yeah, we can see that clip, yeah. Yeah. That goes onto your main your main line goes on there. So now you, these are of you before so you actually come from the rod top, you come down through your yeah. rod rings you tie onto the top of this and it's got a little bait holder would you call that hook yeah, holder bait um yeah bait. Is, there a, is there a name to those clips 
Uh, I think they're called bait clip rig. Yeah, it's just a bait clip. Bait just clip, a bait yeah. clip, yeah. So you're tying your main line onto that. Yeah. And then you've got the straight down there, the running ledger, as per most anglers will know it's a running ledger, it stops there. Then yeah. your hook trace is all here, which is quite long, what, two feet? Yeah. Uh, two or three feet. Two or three feet. Um, almost double this. Yes. Um, and then there's another swivel there. Right. The hook length. There's another swivel there. Got the hook length. So it's very, very long. Just get that, yeah. that's gonna I'm gonna measure it up, but that, that's part of three feet, maybe four feet long. Yeah. Now ordinarily I would have clipped that. Let's do it in miniature. Imagine that's four feet long. Yeah. I would have done years ago a straight clip up here and just clip the bait up. But the principle being this would get what too much what, what, what was it can um, you use it about air resistance um, or something yeah it's basically you want all the all the weight behind the lead yeah Obviously so the bait got, really got, needs to be snagged yeah, up yeah. behind the lead you've, got, you've, you've almost got two weights then yeah and then in the cast you'll have a snaking effect of the bait and that's obviously going to put more tension in the line through the cast as well it can even it might i guess it could aid birds nesting or yeah. overruns as well in a multiplier yeah, yeah. fix it, fix ball you'll be fix okay ball, you'll be fine yeah it can unclip the rig as well if you I always say they yes, unclip yes. easier, yeah. and obviously it tangles up against the lead if it's not clipped up. Yeah, you've got two, and then you've got two resistances, fishing but time. two different resistances, haven't you? Yeah, working against each other. Yeah, the lead yeah. and the bait are fighting each other. Yeah. So now, when you've got that rig like that, yeah, what do you do with that leader? This hook length, and this this the rig body here. This hook length, yeah, goes over this clip here. So up here, yeah, yeah, and then goes onto the impact lead. So it's like up. That's where the up and down. Yeah, because it, it goes up, up the top, then back and down. Then down. So your bait is going to be. Imagine my hand here. There's the bait there. Yeah. It's, your bait's going to be all up here. So when it goes through the air, it's streamlined. Hopefully behind the lead a little bit. Yeah. And more important, it's nice and tight. Those those three loops there are nice and tight. And the same principle. As you can see it better on this one. You can see the grooves there in the uh, little channels that pop that and release it like that. There's yeah. a hook slides out. And this is a newer type of impact lead. Yeah. It's got a plastic nose cone there. Yes. That's meant to give it longer life <laughs> if you hit a rock or something. And it's got thicker wires as well. Yeah, oh, they're, they're, they're a lot thicker. Oh, a lot thicker those, they you feel those, yeah. grip the sand better, so you don't need to uh, bend them as much. Problem with, well, the problem with the original one. Let's show the difference of the two there. You can see them. So these are the old ones, this is the new one with the plastic uh, cone on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem with the original one is because they're formed as almost two splits and the grip the grip wires must be sat in there and then clamped back down through over the lead. Yeah. And obviously if you hit them on a rock they can open back up again. Yeah. And the holes will become damaged and then they just won't they won't move at all. Yeah, yeah. Okay guys, that's good. That's a basic two rigs to be using for yeah. stuff like thornback rays that you might expect down here, maybe yeah, smooth yeah. hounds. Yeah, and uh, these, well, this one, well, we all have our different ways of making rigs. This one's a running lead type. I think yeah. that's what you use, isn't it, Keelan? Yeah, yeah. Um, I like to fix my lead down there. Yeah. And then have a clip there, Yeah. up top, and clip it down. On all this, the only way, well, the way you do this, to make the rig body a little bit uh, shorter, yeah, no longer than the hook length, just so you've got the so it gives the it a little bit almost of the running ledger system starting to work itself up the line again. Yeah, so you've got to um, got to make sure it clips up and stays clipped in the cast, otherwise it's pointless clipping it up. Now the other thing while we're here, um, because we're waiting for the wind to drop down before we go fishing tonight, is hooks. And I know you've got a lot of rough ground here. You guys fish over. Yeah. Um, let's just have a, a run through a few suggestions on hooks for, you know, we're not going to say which ones break, which ones go blunt, but all have different problems, inherent problems. Some are good, some are bad, some have, you know, different situations you can use them over. Yeah. But as I understand it, you want a hook that's sort of fairly, what, springy so that it opens up? Yeah, something that you can, the problem is obviously you're just as likely to hook, to snag in with the hooks as you are the lead. Well, more likely as the hooks because they're searching for the snag. But um, so basically, once you are, once you've got your, you're in the snag on your hook. You want it to bend out and not snap. Yeah. Because obviously a bent hook can be well bent back through and sharpened again, reused. Okay. Well, let's just have a look at a few. Uh, see if Craig's got a couple of packets of hooks just to sh make suggestions to the guys. Um, for the the rigs we've just showed you, these these hooks are the probably the most common. Um, quite fairly thick gauge. So quite strong but also quite brittle sometimes um, 
I, they're they're good for kind of mixed ground, clean ground um, fishing. With you, wouldn't, you wouldn't call it a rough ground hook then. Uh, you can. You could but, have it as a rough ground. But they're a bit it's, brittle it's, for. for so rough if you if you if you hang in a the bottom, there's a chance it will snap. I suppose yeah, that's yeah, one of those brittle yeah. hooks. Yeah. Um, but they they're strong enough to, to to pull a fish out of rough ground. Sure. But if if the point is um, caught. So if that specks on a rock, yeah. regardless of fish, it just turns the point in a bit or it blunts it. Yeah. And if, if see, there's not much flex in these hooks. Yeah. Got it. I can so see that. You're um, yeah, so they're, they're quite brittle and they, they snap. Okay. But for if you use them in the right situation, they are... Well, they do a job. They, they, do, they a job. do the job very well, yeah. And worms or squid or sandal can still be used for any bait then. It's not an explicit yeah. worm hook. No, then. no. They're, they're, not a, they're not a massively thick hook, so you can use them with worm. Yeah. We t I tend to use one with the sandal and fish baits gotcha. and crab baits. Um, uh, Keelan, what, what's that you got in your hand? You got a different packet there. Basically, this is a well. This is the hook that most of well, we would decide to use. It's a softer hook. Uh, well, as you can see, there's a lot more, lot more spring in it. Oh, you see it bending? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Even it's on the strong camera. enough to get a fish in, though. Plenty strong enough. Yeah, that will. Well, what's that? A four, four row. row. That will probably bend out at 30, 40 pound. I would have thought. Yeah. And, and that, say, those are. What's that? I can't read it. Just so the guys know what that code is on there. Uh, that's a Mustad Ultra Point Uptide Viking. That's in a 4 0, this one is. Okay, is there a code on that at all? Uh, no numbers? Quite a long code. Yeah, spit it out. Let's let them uh, hit it. 79515NPBR. There you go. That's all the guys watching. That's the hook. Uh, what would you call that? Sort of local Bristol Channel hook? Uh, that's what a most rough ground yeah. hook, yeah. So that's a rough ground hook. It'll, it'll, yeah. do, it'll do all jobs, though. They, they, they are. They're sharp hooks, and you can sharpen those a lot better than a lot you can of other hooks. Sharpen them, bend them back quite easily. Now, would would either of those two be chemical sh chemically sharpened? I think I think they both are. They are both. But, th but this one you can resharpen. This you one can re you can resharpen both, but those ones um, respond better well to. Yeah, yeah. What a file or a stone would you use? File. I'd use a stone. There you go. Yeah. One's a file, one's a stone. Yeah. Both of which Craig sells. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for business. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they'll, if you get the hook point caught in a rock, um, if you keep steady pressure on it, yeah. if you snagged up, always keep steady pressure, and it might bend, it'll bend out the hook. Yeah. You can bend them back and then resharpen them and cast it straight back out. Now, years ago, I don't know how they do them now, just turn up the other way, Keelan. On the front end here, yeah. for a crab, a crab hook for fishing crabs, we'd have a wide gape hook. I couldn't tell you the number of it, I've forgotten it years ago. We would bend a paperclip through here, wrap the paperclip around and leave a bar up on the paperclip back here, are... spike the crab on it and then elasticate the crab. Uh, is there anything made like that now or there is that are... something you have to make yourself? No, there's, well, I, I, it's a hook pattern like this, just a typical big kind of Aberdeen style hook. Yeah. And it, it's got what you say, but it's on the shank of the hook about there. Yeah. It's got a spike coming off and you can see it's been wrapped around with wire. Yes. And. Um, that's for crabs, explicitly for really crab, crab well, fishing. Crab it's mainly for big bait. You can literally just spike it on and whip it back on top. Yeah, like, that's like it. no hooking on a, hey, keep, the Keep bait. the hook point clear is the main thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fat, fat and short baits okay. is what they're used for. Good show, good show. Um, yeah, we don't really use them much. No, it, well, for our fishing, it's not really a, a use for them. Yeah. Uh, now, rods and reels. Spit them out, guys. Let's hear what you young guys are using rods and reels. Keelan, start with you first. Uh, give, it, give us your best rig. My best, you, my you know, best, your rod reel, what do you use? Uh, and line as well. My favourite setup at the minute is my, probably my new Yuki Q6 uh, 15 foot. That can cast 250 grams, which is, it'll, it'll cast it quite happily, but it's, it's more suited to sort of a five ounce lead, I'd say. So, so it's a five ounce rod for the old fogies like me who don't know what the grams are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, what do you mean, yeah? <laughs> I know what you're saying, yeah. I usually pet up with a, probably an 8,000 pen surf blaster. Yeah. And anything from sort of 6 to 15 pound line. 6 pound line? <laughs> so that's for what, distance? Uh, yeah, basically distance. On the flat sandy beaches there's no need. That Well, what, a 20 pound fish wouldn't put up 6 pound of pressure. Exactly, it? My always been my argument. I yeah, still use yeah. you know, I'm like 15 or 20 and that sort of thing, but I can see the principle on a yeah, yeah. on clean ground, you've, yeah. you've got your, yeah. the option of going light then, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. But a lot of these, these modern lines, you can get a, an average of 
well, an average 0.35 line would be £15, but now you can get an average 0.35 line, it'll be over £30 brake and strain. Are you on mono or are you on, on the braids? Mono. You're on mono, so, so not a braid lover or? or you... uh, mainly the mono because there's more stretch in it and, well, with our, with our coastline you have a lot of ties and a lot of swells. Yes. And when obviously when you've got a, say you've got your, well, mainly with lighter, lighter leads you've got a four ounce lead yeah and you have all you need that stretch in the line to take out the, the waves oh i see so in fact a braid can work against you and bounce it bounce yeah, a grip yeah. lead out yeah, yeah. Well, or move with, the lead yeah with the braid you've got a, any any waves that will drag the line down okay charlie what's your uh, what's your setup uh it depends what type of fishing i'm doing if i'm on a, a flat sandy beach up the channel um i use two bratini uh, Euro casting beach epic. Is that a 15 foot or 12? 15 foot uh, yeah. quiver tip. Um, I, I'll use that with anything from six pound line. Six pound? <laughs> That's lighter than Keelan's. <laughs> Up to 15 pound straight through sometimes, sure. depending on the conditions. Braid lover? Um, I've got a reel with braid on and yeah. I use it sometimes but the weed just tends to stick to it and is that right yeah and I've, but with the softer rods the braid tends to work better up the channel because the the bounce of the waves is taken up with the rod rather than the the line yeah and what reel do you use uh i got um on that i'll use a shimano navi 7000 um, that seems to be a good... Now good these are both fixed balls, so you're fixed, fixed ball enthusiast between yeah. two of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I'm fishing heavier, I've got um, my multiplier set of, I've got Shimano Toriums um, with, uh, well, 0.32, 15 pound line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's Do you thing. use standard line to wind on your leaders or tapered? Uh, uh, I prefer tapered. I prefer tapered leaders, yeah. But if, if we fish in rough ground, um, just normal just straight not, through yeah yes. they're just not cost effective are they no they're quite expensive so with our match fishing when you're not losing much you tend to use tapered leaders they cast a little bit further and obviously they don't catch the weed as much yeah smaller knots um, yes yes but yeah we're probably with a, better, rougher ground. a better breaking strain knot i would say as well is there are the tapered leaders generally for multipliers or for fixed balls or, or uh, either uh, they well, probably have both. they have more use of a fixed ball i'd say because yeah obviously you've got a You've got the ring. You've got the ring. The line up wrapping round the spool and coming off in a coil, yeah. and you have the tendency of a bigger nut with a, a standard leader with the almost a coil catching round the, the knot. Yeah. But with a tapered leader, it's so the knot is so small you'd never catch it. Yeah. Yeah. And right. With these new mod, well, the, the more modern fixed spool rods, the eyes are getting smaller and smaller, and a, a bigger knot going through the small eye sometimes can take an eye off or crack the ceramic. Yeah. So the smaller the knot, the uh, better the cast or the less damage it will do to the rod yeah good that's, good that's why sometimes a fish lines straight through because you've got no knot so when there's a bit of weed you've got no knot coming through your eye yeah it's a pain when it jams in the tip ring isn't it sometimes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so you can land fish quicker and well that's good well listen guys i appreciate that very much hopefully we're going to see you down here somewhere on somerset's north coast and hopefully you're going to outfish the big guys. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Appreciate that. There's a lot of information there, and thanks, you know, for giving us all that. Thank you very much. All right. Cheers. The journey through the village to Bossington Beach was like a scene from a period TV drama. Ancient stonework, quaint gardens with traditional English flowers, but be aware, in peak tourist season, those narrow lanes can challenge the patience of any driver. Would you reverse back or the other guy? I filmed the lads as they climbed the first part of Bossington Beach. I figured it was just up and over the top to the sea. But the width of that immense stone barrier, formed entirely by nature's storms, was indeed jaw-dropping. I picked my jaw up on the way back. It was a case of millions, no, billions of tons of rounded grey stones that made up this traditional storm beach. It was remote, it was huge, 
it was awe-inspiring. What a place to cast a beach rod. Hi, we're down at Lossington Beach, uh, down in uh, West Somerset. Uh, it's about an hour, two hours, hour and a half before low water. Uh, just aiming for the smooth hounds. Um, so basically, this is the type of rig uh, we're going to use for the smooth hounds. Uh, got a, a rotten bottom. We're going to fish a, a rotten bottom rig because it can be snaggy out there. Uh, we've got a Gemini breaker here, attached to an imp. Um, onto a hundred pound rig body. Some people might think that's a bit excessive, but I just think it's, it makes sense because in the environment, the, the, the water out there. We've got a bead, a swivel and a bead, and then we've got a knot, an overhand knot there, which then becomes the hook length. Uh, onto that, we have a, a couple of uh, 4.0 mustard, Uptide Vikings. Now they're your specialist one for springing out if you get snagged yeah, up, if yeah? You, if it's when you're a snaggy, snaggy ground out there, you probably find 90% of the, the snags are lead. Um, not the lead getting caught, it's it's the hook getting caught. And if you're using some big old meat hook and you're just snagged in the bottom, there's a good chance you're going to lose the lock and leave a shock leader out there and just a snag to catch on for your next cast. So it just it just makes sense, really. Um, that's the way, the way forward, really. Uh, and then just as a, as it's a, a fairly strong hook length there, a normal blood knot or a grinner is, can be quite big and chunky. So what I do is just do a, a, like a clinch knot, which is just through the, the hook there, wrap it round my finger twice, and then pull it round and then tuck it in, under between the two loops. Give it a little bit of a wet. That slides down, doesn't it? Yeah, and then just slide it down, and you, you find the more you pull it, the tighter that knot becomes. And obviously it's an added bonus as well. Is that that tag end is uh, that tag end is facing pretty much facing up, so slightly out, but generally it does go up. Cut him straight in half, and that's got that nice juicy stuff there. What I like to do as well, just to, so it doesn't wash out in the tide so much, is get one of the claws. Just pull the shell off. Try to make sure you get all the shell off this because this bit sort of helps the, the leak of the, the scent out of the crab. And that lasts a bit longer. Yeah, once he's, he's out there, I like to get the crab, just lay it across that flesh there. It just sort of like pops it in there and it just lets it fish a bit better. Makes it fish a bit longer, you think, does yeah, it? Stop it all, stop, stop, yeah, just stop than, it breaking up. That's it, if you cast that straight out, as soon as it hits the water, probably 50% of that is going to be floating Gone. around yeah. in the top inch of the sea. So this just protects it probably a little bit more so it gets to the bottom and then it can it can leak out. I prefer to lasticate this up before you're, I put it you're on You're doing hook. it first, before? Yeah, it's before, I just find yeah. it. So you can, you can while, while my rod's fishing, yeah. I can sit here and I can bait up, you know, make five or six baits up, no problem. Bit of a shell there, just remove that. Just get that on there. Obviously, when you elasticate, you're not going to get all the lock it all in there. And then we pull that his legs down a little bit. But low, plenty of elastic. Don't be, don't be shy. Then you know, a bit of elastic's not going to put the fish off. Yeah. And just, I like to hold it like that. Some people just pull it off and snap it off. Personally, I got into the habit of going like that around my hands and then tucking underneath and doing it for what it's worth, seconds, and that's the way I've been doing it. Uh, then you've got your bait, and you can just you can have these made up in advance, so you haven't got to mess around every five minutes when you're recasting or ten minutes. So then, basically, can, can you freeze those, uh, Craig? You can like freeze that, you can, you can knock a load yeah. up and freeze them up in no advance. No problem. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, definitely not a problem. Also, while I then basically baiting up, just poke them in there. Just manipulate it round there, out the bottom, and that's it. That you could fish out on a single if you want, not really a problem. But I like to go for the the panel, and it's, it's almost it's almost gang hook style, really, with them back to back. So, and then you just a couple of turns round the shank of the hook to lock them in place, and that's it. And you've got hook there, hook there, 
and two charges. Yeah, two charges, and pretty much it, it's just the way I like to do it. So whether it makes any difference or not. Uh, another thing is you could do is if you're feeling in the mood, just take those claws off there. Just peel the shell yeah, off. Yeah, just peel them tips off. They could wave around in the tides. Just you know, it's just an added bit of an attraction. Uh, anyway, that goes down to the bottom of the right and bottom rig now. Bit of uh, I've got 15 pound trilene as we rot and bottom. Um, might again, people would think that's a bit excessive, but I've got 0 0.40 main line, um, which is around about 20 pounds. Um, so, a little piece of this makes sense 15 pound. Short piece of that, tie that onto the bottom of the imp, which is the bait clip. Just a normal blood knot. And that's a special little rig item just for uh, yeah, breakaways, to loot it, yeah. to, if you get snagged up. That's it, there's plenty on the market. Um, I just, I, I've just been using this one. Uh, another fan, another one I'm just getting used to using is the, the Tronics, um, the Tronics Canny Link, which is a pretty versatile little piece of kit. You know, this, it almost contradicts rot and bottom, this does, because that's an extra chunky bit of component to get stuck between rocks. Yeah. But it's not that severe here. I wouldn't want to use this. If it was never going to get the rig back, I wouldn't use that because that'd just be it would work against you rather than with you. Yeah. And then obviously you've got a weak line there, you've got the lead there. Just a... I can see what's coming, I can see the principle of it. That's yeah. it. Tucked blood knot. A few we saying, how's he doing a cast with 15 pound line to his lead? But he's not. <laughs> he's going to clip the lead up, aren't you? That's it, yeah. And then the lead basically sits in this clever little device. You just sit on there like so. Poke it in there. Bit fiddly, but. Just sits oh, in there. Like just that. slips over. That little yeah. red bit slips over and holds it. And obviously, you Imp on there is a bait clip, so when he's all clipped down and ready to go. Oh, got it. Clips on there. It's all clipped on. Now that, that's it basically. Um, pretty simple to use, simple to make. And this, the, the aim of the game there is that will go out, that will hit the sea. As that hits the water, that little red disc there will pop up and that will just slide off. And then you're on your theory. 15 pound line And obviously then. that bait clip as well does the same thing. And then you're just locked into 15 pound line. If it's not snagged, 95% of the time, you'll get your leg back anyway. Yeah. If it is snagged, 95% of the time, you're not gonna get your rig back. Yeah. But, and also the double added thing, if that is stuck between in there, if that's stuck between a rock in there, yeah. and you're snagging and I'm pulling and pulling. It will spring open. These will bend out. They will bend out. They won't snap, but they'll bend. Good tip, tips, Craig. Let's get that one in the water and see if there's yeah. any fish out there. Really hope. Yeah, the beach down in Bossington here is, a, you know, it's a pretty versatile beach. There's, you know, you're not just stuck to one thing. Uh, there's uh, plenty of species throughout the year to be caught. Um, even in the depths of winter, this is where you you come to to catch a few fish or get a few bites at least. Uh, you know, through the through the seasons, uh, you get. You know the cod and the whiting in the winter. Uh, into the spring, you'll, you'll get the big thornbacks coming in here uh, to drop the young. Uh, bullhus, early spring. Uh, the codling in the spring, and uh, in, in, into the summer, you get the, the, the shoals of the packs of smoothhounds, uh, which obviously we're after today. Uh, later on in the summer, you get trigger fish coming here, bream. Uh, so tactics can be varied. You know, you can be heavy duty pulleys with rotten bottoms. You can fish three up clip downs, match fishing tactics to scratch as many species as you want. Try to get the smaller species, yeah? Yeah, smaller. I've been here been in the summer smooth hounding and just had one rod out for the smooth hounds because fishing two rods can be quite hectic at times. Uh, I just put a second rod out with a size four hooks, uh, little tiny baits catching little wrasse and little bream and all sorts. Really. But Charlie, I see you're already rigged up, mate. You're all ready to go. So what's this tray about? Uh, this tray is to keep everything to hand. We've got bait, scissors, uh, spare rig, uh, rotten bottom uh, stuff, and uh, leads. 
keeps everything to hand when you want to move up and down the beach because there's a big tide range on this beach. Yeah. Keep everything to hand. It saves having to go back to the box every time you want something. Is that from match fishing really, that, that sort of uh, thing? Yeah, well that's where it's come from for me. Yeah, when I was match fishing you need everything close. You need to be able to work from... Like, you need to be able to get everything. And um, I've just... I fish this all the time now. It's come with me everywhere. This is a Pen one, uh, 515, the um, 2, which are really good casting reels and they're ideal for this kind of not too bad a ground. A heavier ground, then you go into the Pen 525, which is just an old mag, which casts really well and retrieves very well. And when it gets really rough, then we use heavier reels like the Saltus, which cover everything. First fish then Paul. First yeah. one bites the dust. Yeah. Lost one, got one. And crab? Squid. On oh, squid? Yeah. So what's the uh, little pink, what are they, rubber strips here? Yeah, well, this is part of a cricket bat handle, which I just cut up. And it um, helps you grip the spool when you cast the multipliers, like that. Uh, so you, you don't burn your thumb? So you don't burn your thumb, yeah. And it also, sometimes when you've got wet or greasy hands, um, the line can slip through while casting. This just stops that. And uh, they last quite well. I've had this on here for about a year now. And you just tape it on with electrical tape at the base? Yeah, well, yeah, I've, I've made it so it wraps around the rod, but you can just have a little strip taped on there. Um, people use bits of inner tube, um, any bits of rubber. Uh, some people have it on their thumb. Like oh, I've seen a thumb, a thumb stall thing, yeah. Yeah, but I've, I've got these on the rods in a pretty pink colour, as you can see. Yeah, yeah, so you see your miles away with those. Yeah, I know. Um, and yeah, they've just helped my casting, especially in winter when your hands are cold. Yeah, and you, and you don't get your... Sometimes you might get a leader knot. You clip, yeah. clip your thumb as well. Yeah, well, I don't worry where my leader knot goes now. I, yes. I, a lot of time it ends up in the middle, but you can't feel it through this. Yeah, because normally you put it on... I was always told you need to put it on the inside or something yeah. like that. Yeah, well, sometimes in a match fishing situation, you you really need, you don't have time to sort the, sort the knot out. Yeah. You're trying to cast back out as quick as you can. So if you've got one of these, you can't feel the knot, so it doesn't matter where it goes. Good thinking. Right, let's see those rods go. Hopefully, yeah. Fish. 
a little bit higher. Crab or squid? Uh, crab. Crab's legs. Big bunch of them. Yeah, the, the, with the conservation minded of anglers these days, uh, the, the safest way and the most you know, safest way to weigh the smooth arms in a weighing sling, uh, just minimise the harm. You know, some people hang them up by the tails, the gills. The gills. Yeah. You don't do them any good. This is the safest way. Nine and a half, ten, I reckon. As a 915 uh, starting to be around, it's my PB. For... PB for you? Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Yeah, it's all right. Good man. All right, let's get him back. Yeah. He'd have been £10.5 if I weighed it for you, Charlie. That was a good cast, Paul, but what was that bit you had on the bottom of the rod, on the oh, butt? It just reduces, because I fish with the reel down. It's harder to wind in without the reducer on there, so oh. I find it a lot easier with a reducer in there. And what is that? Just show them exactly what the people, so the people see what it is. So that's the normal rod. Yeah. And this is just like 14 inches of... Extra. Extra. And that's just really and for that retrieving. Is retrieving. And that's to increase the leverage, I imagine. It'd be well, it's the pull, yeah, and everything, and it stops if you have a good fish, it doesn't hurt your stomach so much. And is that standard, or is that something that you've made? Is it standard rods come with them? Yeah, most rods do, um, and some rods don't. And I couldn't get the reducers for this one, so I made them up myself. Oh, good idea. Now, what's that line you've got on there? Any that's uh, F1. F1, it's called, I've heard of that yeah. one before, yeah? Yeah, it's 18 pound on, uh, yeah, 18 pound. F1. Now and later on, once the tide goes comes in, I'll change it to 25 pound. F1. And I see uh, you're on uh, Terry Carroll stuff here, is it? The yeah. old zip zip, zip legs, is it? Yeah. Beautiful rods. How old would they be? These ones are nearly 10 years old. 10 years old. So no plans to change them. I can imagine no, you're happy enough with no, them. No, I'm very happy with them. And are they 12s or longer? 13.6. Yeah. 13.4 uh, and 13.8. And what would that throw? Uh, eight ounce, no trouble at all. Eight ounces? Yeah, Bloody no, hell. 200 grams, no problem at all. Um, I have two different sizes because normally I fish with a rod on the side. Yeah, so sideways the, to the beach. Yeah, so I have one rod here yeah. at 13.4 and the other one at 13.8. I know so what the you mean. lines are not catching. Yeah, I do it quiver tipping for bream. Yeah, yeah, exactly one, the same. One rod's further out than the other, yeah, effectively, yeah. Always, yeah. But, uh, yeah. And the reels, what are the reels you're using? These are pens. This is an old pen, Mag yeah. two, uh, 525. And this is the new 515, which isn't really good enough for the here. Yeah. But until the tie comes in, yeah. it's ideal. And when the tie comes in, I go on to a Dower Saltus. It was as I was filming Keelan casting that my own rod took off from the rod rest behind me. Luckily, Keelan was there to get hold of it and help wind the fish in. Still kicking? Yeah, he's still on there. Good man. Let's go down and have a look at it. Ooh. He's in here somewhere, any guys? Can you see him? Not yet. See the shop leader, so he's uh, fairly close. And so it's a good one. Oh, you got it. Okay, good great. Just go and follow great now. I've got to make you this one. You can clearly see it's a starry smooth down by these little uh, stars on its back. Good. Okay, this is a typical size smooth round you catch on Bosnian Beach. At sort of five to six pounds. Let's get it back in the water. A superb Bossington smoothhound returned again to the surf. What a great place to fish. And what a great fish to catch from the shore. <laughs>